Prevnar 20 is from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia. Continued approval may depend on a supportive study. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most commonly reported side effect was pain at the injection site. For additional common side effects and full prescribing information, please call 1-855-213-2138 or visit Prevnar20.com. I want to be able to keep my plans. So I'm asking my doctor about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. Luther Family Buick GMC has the inventory you've been waiting for. Don't just settle for what's left over. Take your pick of our huge selection. The shelves are stocked and the lot is full with rates as low as 0.9% on a new GMC Sierra 1500 or 3.9% financing on select Buick models for qualified buyers. Bring your title and your trade and come in today while the selection is strong. Luther Family Buick GMC, corner of I-29 and 32nd Avenue, South Fargo. We are professional grade. Hi there, Steve Hallstrom here inviting you to join me and a bunch of my friends from the station for the Fargo Marathon Family 5K Fun Run. The 5K is for everybody. Walk, jog, pull the kids in the wagon, whatever you want to do, it's all about getting outside. We'll line up in the Fargo Dome for the start and finish, and we all get a t-shirt and a medal. It's all the fun of Marathon Week without all the work. Friday, May 19th, 6.30 p.m., a perfect way to say hello to summer. Get signed up at FargoMarathon.com. And welcome to Weather and Ag in Focus. I want to thank everybody for joining us this afternoon. I'm Chief Meteorologist Dean Wysocki, along with Meteorologist Justin Storm and our wonderful, talented Ag Director, Bridget Riedel. Guys, it's finally starting to feel like spring. Is it, though? Well, at least for today. Hey, that's nice, though. Because there are there there are changes coming, unfortunately, as we head into this weekend. But uh, are you going to bust out the S word again? <sighs> That's an FCC violation, I believe. Yeah. Well, I are mean, you sure? Try it. <clears throat> Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it now. We might see a few flakes of snow this Saturday morning, uh... but it's nothing measurable. But mainly rain. And we could use Detective you know, hey, Squirrel could... just entered the chat. He says you're <laughs> freaking nuts. And if snow shows up at my house, Dean's coming to clean my sidewalks. That was the deal we made. Oh, you right got a, there. Hey. You got a deal. Opa. You got a deal. Hey, and today <laughs> is well, it's draft day in the NFL. So Ooh, we're going to cut in the middle of hockey Stanley cup playoffs. We don't talk about it, football here. The, well, this is true, but, uh, um, with rain coming at least for the next few days, I want to give away a rain gauge today and we're going to give, one, okay. we're going to give, Oh yeah, go, go Bridget. Oh, I can't. I want to remind folks, though, if you got a rain gauge from us, we need you to send back information as it does rain. How much rain have you been getting? You can email us, weather or ag at flagfamily.com. You can call us on our Red Wing Shoes hotline, 701-293-9000. You can comment on our Weather and Ag Facebook page and let us know what your rainfall has been because we gave you the gauges. Mm -hmm. Now we want some info back. Right. So uh -huh. should we throw the answer out now? We'll start taking calls right now the in the first answer? segment. The question. Oh. Okay. Well, we could throw no, out. Let's, like, let's make this more interesting. Let, you let's give throw the out answer the answer, and, we'll and if you can, can guess the, the question. <laughs> question. <laughs> I, hey, you know what? That might not be bad. <laughs> Reverse <laughs> trivia. So, all right. It's, uh, it's draft day today. And the Chicago Bears are looking to uh, clean up on some good draft picks. So we're going to make this a Bears question. The Bears right now play in, it's a two-part question. What is the current Bears stadium that they play in? And where did the Bears originally play football? What was the name of the place when they started playing football in Chicago. It's kind of a trick question. 701-293-9000 on our Red Wing Studio hotline. So, let's see. All right, go ahead. Me, call me, it. me, me. Can I? <laughs> it's not the answer you think. So, if somebody knows this right off the bat, uh, I'm going to be surprised. Uh, go ahead, caller. What's your name and your guess? Uh, Fred. Hey, Fred. 
So what's what's the cur- yeah, what's the name of the current stadium that the Bears play in? What's that? Soldier Field. And what was the name of the place where they originally played? Wrigley Field. Oh, close. You got one out of the two. You got one out of the two. All right. Caller number two, you are up next. What's your name and what's your guess? Jake. Jake. All right. Where do the Bears play right now? Soldier Field. Now, what was the name of the place they played at originally? What was it called then? Wrigley Field. No, you guys are close. You guys are close. You guys are close. And the key, um, the key is what? was the name of the park called then all right we've got another caller what's your name and what is your guess uh they used to play at wrigley now they play at soldier no you guys are close uh killing me i know it's again it's a trick question you guys are so close you guys are so close so again what's the name of the bear stadium they play in now everybody got that Soldier Field. So, what was the name of the place they played at originally? What was it called then? That's your that's your clue. All right, caller, what's your name and what's your guess? Hey, uh, my name is Jason. Uh, Soldier Field currently, and I, uh, Wrigley Field was called Cub Park. Got it. Cub Bingo. Park. They played at yeah. Everybody yeah. When it when they. When they originally started playing there in the early 20s, it was called Cubs Park, not Wrigley Field. It was changed over to Wrigley Field in, I believe it was 27. So, great answer. And uh, you, we're going to set you up with the rain gauge. Uh, Jacob, can you take his information? And then, uh, uh, oh, he got disconnected? Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, you hit the cancel button. No, I didn't. He hung up. <sighs> oh. Jacob, you want to take – Call Jacob, back. You, yeah, the take the calls there, Jacob. <laughs> oh, man, it was – so, yeah, if Wrigley Field is what everybody yeah, – that's what it's called now. But when the Bears played there, it was called Cubs Park. And when Wrigley um, – when Mr. Wrigley bought the stadium, he changed it in 1927 to what is now known as Wrigley Field. That's where they used to play. Hmm. So there's a little football trivia for you this afternoon. So uh, congratulations. Was that Jake? I believe that wasn't that who uh, guessed the right answer. Anyway, Jake. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Call back. And uh, I, Jake, I think Jacob's on the line with him right now. So congratulations on that. Um, also, we are having a draft party at Sweet Shots tonight. And a lot of the crew from here is going to be down there. So we invite you uh, to come on down to Sweet Shots this evening for our draft party and Say hello, and please don't throw anything at us just because the weather is bad. It's not our fault. It's not our <laughs> good the sweet only shots. One just stand under a heater. <laughs> yeah, so I'll get wet and dry <laughs> out under the heater. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Anything out of the draft you're looking forward to there, Mr. Wysocki? <sighs> you know what? The uh, offensive li- offensive line – and you got to shore up that defense too, but they were they got to shore up that offensive line and give Justin Fields more time to throw. But with uh, with Rogers gone now, it's anybody's division, so it should be. Packers will probably be better now. <laughs> they might be, no doubt. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. You know I can't. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing who uh, who the Vikings pick in the draft too. It should be fun. Should be fun night. Probably no one good. Now, you guys are Vikings fans. Come on. No, I'm not. Oh, you're, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a Viking fan, but I know how it ends every year. Yeah. So. <laughs> Try being a you don't, you don't get your hopes up. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, it's man. just like the Wag series going on right now. I know this. I know we've, we've went from, from Wag to Swag, and Jay should be in here because all we've been doing is talking sports so far, and he's blowing up our chat room right now he's like why am i not in there uh <laughs> the whole division with the minnesota wild man they they took one away from dallas in dallas and they come back they win one i'm like oh my god i'm actually getting hope here and then they start dropping the ball and choking and just a reminder okay just, you, oh, you got our sports director minnesota. you got our sports director this what, this is supposed to be weather and egg why did this turn it's in swag, now our man. sports director is on the show for half of the week right. our sports director is in here now what's what's the beef 
So I, <laughs> oh, I'm going news. back into the past, but you, did you just say that the, the NFC North is wide open because Aaron Rodgers is gone? Oh, yeah. Green Bay wasn't relevant last year. You always have to worry about Rodgers, so. As much as you might not like him, he's, he's always that X factor. The best thing about uh, it is whenever he plays bad or like crap, oh, I was, I was just playing through an injury, man. I played Well, and here's the, the thing. He, owned, he did own the Bears. Every time they played the Bears, he owned the Bears. Everybody that's not the Vikings owns the Bears. Get out of we, here, guys. We don't you, don't you jump Bears. in here, too. Look at you. You got a Chicago hat, a Chicago shirt. <laughs> what, is all, what is this going on? You got some C's on your socks, too. <laughs> Get out of here. We're trying to do our show. I was just, I was just here to raise my hands, Dean. Okay. That's all. I mean, it, it, thanks, I, you know, thanks, Jace, for filling in for me this week. Jace, well, hey, we do appreciate you filling in, you know. When 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 we're down for the count, you'd step well, up to the know, plate. May, maybe if you guys would, you know, not to, you know, keep yourself a little bit healthy here maybe you know drink more water or something that speaking of <laughs> how, how dare you you gotta hydrate dean hydrate he did ask some really good uh ag questions while i was uh dying in my deathbed for a couple of days i i tuned in just to see how jace was gonna do because he's sports and this is leather and ag and i'm like he's asking some really good questions here and you did your homework too well that's why that's you know i still talk to my dad so he knows all that stuff so you know it's easier that way it works out really well there because because you did such a good job you just unofficially made yourself the permanent substitute yeah. I want a bucket of chicken. <laughs> we'll get him a bucket of chicken for yes. that. I'm so hungry right now. Get back to your show, please. Well, switching gears yes. from swag back to wag, uh, we're going to have a fun guest that's joining us uh, hopefully here in the next segment. That's going to be Tyler Seam. I believe it's Seam, right, Bridget? Syme. T- uh, Tyler Syme. Syme. And- Syme. Yep. Syme. Syme. Yep. Red Pine and Distillery out of Grand waiting. Forks. And we're going to be learning yeah, how I'm we look- can turn uh, my corn into amazing whiskey. Well, because today is about our favorite things, booze and beef. And you guys talked sports long enough to completely get away from why I was going to talk about <laughs> deworming and cattle. So way to go, guys. That's a nice thing that you managed to stay away from there. Good work. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, you forgot Tyler's one more here. thing that we, uh, we love. <laughs> Talking oh. down on the bears. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Okay. That is true. <laughs> I think we have break coming Sorry, up too, dude. right? Yeah, yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> You're in the wrong We're going to ask Tyler <laughs> if he actually cares about the bears, and maybe not, but we'll ask him when he joins us, and that'll be, again, Tyler Syme with Red Pine Distillery. He's going to join us when we come back, so please stay tuned. We now call to order the meeting of extraordinary heroes. Thunderfoot. Here. Mega Maiden. Let's go. Wheat Farmer. Uh, yeah, w- what am I doing here? You defeated Evil Dawn and saved your crop quality. Well, yeah, I used Sphere X fungicide on my wheat and barley. <laughs> Keep your secrets, man. No secret, just best in class Dawn reduction. So modest, a mighty hero indeed. Yeah. Be a hero with Sphere X fungicide from BASF. Always read and follow label directions. As planting season begins across the country, the American Seed Trade Association reminds farmers to follow the basic steps for seed treatment stewardship. Follow directions on seed container labeling. Eliminate weeds in the field prior to planting. Minimize dust by using advanced seed flow lubricants. Be aware of honeybees and hives located near the field. Ensure that any spilled seeds are removed or covered by soil to protect wildlife and the environment. And remove all treated seed left in equipment. For more information, visit seed-treatment-guide.com or contact your seed dealer. Oh, can you imagine a stress-free Sunday with family, friends, fun, and food? You can have it when you make Barron's your new Sunday brunch headquarters. Experience a brunch like nowhere else. Your kids will love the customizable waffle bar, fresh scrambled eggs, thick-cut bacon, and much more. Plus, while Mama sips on a mimosa, you can wear out the kids in the arcade at Kingpins. For a stress-free Sunday, mention My Brunch Headquarters and receive 20% off Brunch at Barron's. Make your Sunday stress-free, filled with great food, no cleanup, and most importantly, where family, friends, fun, and food come together for Brunch at Barron's. 
go to brunch at barons.com again brunch at b-a-r-o-n-s dot com and don't forget to mention my brunch headquarters for 20 percent off and experience your stress-free sunday at brunch at barons.com brunch at barons located inside kingpins off i-29 and 52nd avenue south in fargo I'm so excited to retreat to the lake this spring. I'm going to sit on the deck and relax with my favorite book. Relax? you got to be kidding me. There's way too much. Break up the leaves, clean the beach, open the cabin, it never ends. Don't let it stress you out. Do what I do. Call Nancy and the staff at Labor Masters. Let them help. Nancy here from Labor Masters. This year, why don't you enjoy all your days at the lake and let us do the work. Labor Masters is locally owned and reasonably priced. Call us today at 701-566-8755 or check us out online at labormasters.net. Old Man Winter's moving on out, and it's time to put a spring back in your step. Hi, Teresa here from the local Red Wings shoe store, and I'm here to tell you that Red Wings are not only for hardworking individuals. We've got footwear for every occasion, and here at Red Wings Shoes, we have partnered with Volumental and Superfeet to offer 3D printed orthotics. So stop on in and check it out for yourself at 3003 Main Avenue in Fargo. Red Wings Shoes for ultimate durability. It's the season truck buyers wait all year for. Chevy truck season at Pucklet Chevrolet GMC. We finally have a large selection of Chevy trucks that are now available with special event offers like the new 23 Chevy Silverado 1500. And now is a great time to order your new Chevy or check out our new inventory arriving daily at Pucklet Chevrolet GMC in Valley City or PucklettsValleyCity.com. Tradition, values, and family ties. Chevy, find new roads. Adam with Cheyenne Gardens joins us, and lots of people are talking about bare root planting. So, Adam, what are some of the advantages of bare root planting? Some of the advantages of bare root tree planting are, one, that tree has never been in the pot, so there are no circula circu circulating roots. The roots aren't growing in a circle following the can of the nursery can or the pot. So there's an advantage there. Number two is generally you get to dig a little smaller hole. You, nice and wide like we're supposed to, but not as deep, so it looks more like a soup bowl. The other advantage of bare root trees is generally they're cheaper. You can get two for almost the price of one versus a container grown tree versus a bare root tree. So smaller hole, generally a little less money, and gets, gets the project done right away in the spring because it has to be done right away. What's a quick challenge in bare root planting? The challenge in bare root planting is to have the time to get it done right away in the spring. And the other thing is we generally don't want to overwater that tree because they're not as full in leaf, usually the first year, as a tree that comes out of a nursery container. Thanks, Adam. Cheyenne Gardens, it's a great place to wander, admire, and explore through the largest variety of trees, shrubs, and bedding plants in the area. Put Cheyenne Gardens on the top of your list as the best place to visit for your gardening, shrubbery, and tree questions this year. Cheyenne Gardens, just off I-29, north of Fargo, in Harwood. Welcome to WDAY Weather and Ag in Focus. I'm Bridget Riedel, Ag Director. Happy to have the whole team back in town, and that is Dean Wysocki, Chief Meteorologist, and Justin Storm, Meteorologist Extraordinaire, who's remote because we won't let him back in the studio until we pro he promises he's not sick anymore and then we'll let him back. I still have a slight <laughs> I still have a slight cough so Okay, still you can't come back yet. Bubble. See this, this <laughs> That's fine. Background back here. This is the void you trapped me in. You're doing well in there, bubble boy. Nice work. Thanks. St stay home. Okay. Stay home. <laughs> <laughs> now, for those who are always concerned about what may happen around them, well, one of our partners with the Here We Grow project is Irie Insurance. And a little fun fact for you, did you know that more than 50% of all fatal highway incidents happen in rural areas? Often they involve farm equipment and insufficient insurance. If you have any concerns about your farm insurance, your crop insurance, etc., you will want to reach out to Irie Insurance, irieinsurance.com. You can visit with my friend Bethany Rents over at Irie. She would be more than happy to help you out to get you started on the right path to what you need to know to avoid those incidents and make sure you're covered when they happen. So other things that we like to talk about here in the show, beef and booze. And today's guest brings us the booze part. And that is Tyler Syme. He is with Red Pine Distillery out of Grand Forks. Tyler, how are you? 
I'm doing good, guys. Thank you for having me on. This is awesome. It's so good to see you. Thanks for being a part of the live stream today. And so, Tyler, tell us about your business and yourself, your background. Love to hear it. Yeah. Um, so Red Pine Distillery, uh, like you mentioned, located in Grand Forks, North Dakota. We have been open for just a hair over five years now. We started in February of 2018. We make a variety of products, mostly from sugar beets, um, vodka, rum, things like that. And then we have a few whiskey products that we work work on of late, um, some wheat, some bourbon, which is corn and, and some other things, and then uh, some, some custom stuff like we're uh, talking about today. Okay, so... You said wheat and corn, all local grains, or how does that work for you? Yes. So we, um, I make a focus of trying to to uh, source that stuff as, as locally as we can get it. So we have some farmers in the Grand Forks area that we work with to get uh, corn and wheat from. Um, some of the things that we can't get right around Grand Forks are malted barley, but we have a, a great malt house that's located in Bismarck that we, we purchase that stuff from. Is that two-track malting? That is. Awesome. That is also a North Dakota product, so that's awesome. Right. And Tyler, uh, you said you've been doing this uh, since 2018. What, uh, what kind of got you starting this up? Uh, I, I started my education in the chemical engineering program at UND, and I went into that program with the belief that I was going to go work for like Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, one of those really awesome big companies. Um, I went through about a semester and realized that they probably don't hire fresh grads out of North Dakota. Um, continued the program and looked into it um, and, and just I was really fascinated with, with that, um, that process, distillation. We learn a lot about it in the chemical engineering discipline. Um, it's used a lot in chemical separation processes. So I, I finished my schooling. I went to work for um, the crystal sugar plant in Crookston. And just I, I pursued it and I decided to, to give it a shot myself instead of maybe looking for somewhere else to go work. And how, how has business grown? How, what, what's, the, what's the biggest change you've seen or learned over the last uh, few years since, you've, uh, since you started this? <sighs> It's, uh, I think the, the thing I learned the most about the, the distilling business is it's, it's not a lot of distilling, it's a lot of paperwork. So it's not all the, the fun stuff I was intrigued by and, and loved doing. It's, it's a <laughs> lot of paperwork, a lot of report writing and, <laughs> and filing stuff, whether it's state or federal every month. <laughs> so what's this whole process look like? Let's... Uh... Let's, walk, let's kind of break it down a little bit for those who are unfamiliar with how the whole distilling process works from crop to finished product. What does that look like uh, from step to step? Sure. Um, so I'll use the, the grain base as an example because it's a little bit easier and it's uh, a more relatable, I think, to some folks that do home brewing. It's very similar in that, in that regard. So we'll get um, grain from one of our local farmers, whether it's the corn or wheat, it's the uh, same process essentially. We'll take that. Um, it is ground into essentially a really coarse flour. We then um, steep that in, in hot water. Corn has to be a little bit hotter. Wheat can be, um, we usually shoot for about 155, 160. And what we're doing there is trying to draw out all of that starch. From, from the grains. So it's, it's, we're breaking those kernels to try and expose that stuff a little easier. We extract that into the water through steeping. And then we add um, either malted barley or we'll use enzymes that take that starch and break it into sugar. We'll take that liquid, we'll separate the grains out of that. Um, that goes off to some local um, people that have chickens, cows, uh, and it gets recycled back as, as a feed that we, we give away just to try and offload it because we do go through quite a bit. Um, that liquid is then fermented. We'll get essentially a beer at that point. So it's, it's a liquid that's probably 6 to 7% alcohol by volume. We will distill that, which is essentially just boiling it and then capturing the, the vapor that's coming off of it. 
Um, the first time through, it'll concentrate it down from six to seven percent to right in the range of maybe 25 to 30. We'll distill that a second time. That'll get it up higher to probably around 60 to 65, depending on the, the system that you're using. Um, and then depending on what you're making and, and what you want it to taste like, you'll maybe distill that a, a third time. Um, from there, that third time, we're, we're separating some things out, um, taking only the, the section of that stuff. We, we do cuts. They're called uh, a head's cut a heart's cut and a tail's cut. And you're just trying to separate some things out. The, the ethanol that we're after is in right in the middle there. It's called the heart's cut. It's about 70% of what you'll actually end up collecting. The head's cut is the is before that. It's got some of the, the higher alcohols in it that we're trying to, to eliminate. The tail's cut has some heavier alcohols and some different fusel oils that we're also trying to eliminate just out of the final product. And then it goes into a barrel um, and from there, for about two to four years, I stare at it every day, hoping it would go faster. <laughs> uh, trying to get that aging process to go. Um, we shoot for for our traditional products that we make that are aged in in 53 gallon barrels, the full size barrels. That um, our minimum target for those is two years. Um, and then depending on, we'll pull samples probably a year and a half in, we'll pull, start pulling samples to see where it's at, how long we think it needs to go. Um, but we let it mature as it sees fit. Again, usually slower than I, than I would like. But, and then it, you know, we'll, uh, we'll empty those barrels. We'll filter it to get any of the chunks of char and sediment stuff that was in the barrel out of it that it's pulled out through the, its time there. It's usually diluted down then, depending on how high of a strength you put it in the barrel at. There's some evaporation that takes place. So depending on your conditions, um, you'll either lose water, so it'll get higher in alcohol, or you'll lose the ethanol will evaporate, and it'll end up lower in alcohol. So we'll do water addition to get it to the target. Um, most stuff that you buy on the shelf and get is, is around 80 proof or 40%, um, and that's usually where we end up is in that range. Well, I'm sure that there is a bunch of questions that just arose from all of that process. <laughs> and I know that I, I have, I I can know get a I little wordy a too, so you might have to cut me off if I get too deep into it. I, this is obviously no, something that I like was, talking that about. That was so. perfect. You just gave a lot of information there on how the whole process works down. And one of the key parts in there, there's actually two. And I've always been fascinated with the distillery or distillery process. Uh, you would said there was a head's cut, a heart's cut, a foot, and a, a tail's cut. I didn't really know that there was a difference in where you're cutting out of that batch of whatever it is you just brewed. So maybe we'll touch on that a little bit when we come back from our break because we're at the bottom of the hour. And the second part in there comes to the aging process because I know there's a lot of different ways and techniques that you can use when aging from how much char you have in barrels to a bunch of other things. So maybe we'll dive into that a little bit. And if you have a question about this whole process, if you want to ask our guests a question, that's Tyler Syme. He's with the, um, oh, I'm just thinking, give me, give me a second. I got the name here. Red, Pine, Red Distillery. Pine Distillery. <laughs> Red Pine Distillery up here in Grand Forks. Feel free to give us a call on the Red Wing Shoes studio line. That's 701-293-9000. Or you can always reach us via email at weather or ag at flagfamily.com. Stay tuned because we'll be right back. They'll have you laughing right along with them. They're Bonnie and Friends. 1866, you could care less about this. Okay, are you putting words in my mouth? Why do you... Why oh, do you I'll put words in your mouth on this Why do you think one? I care less about things? Because it's a urinal. When's the, last time, <laughs> when's the last time you used a urinal, Bonnie? Can't say I ever have. Was I right, Bonnie? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> 1866, the, <laughs> the patent for a urinal. No less. And that's pretty important stuff, right? Yeah. Bonnie and Friends. Catch them weekday mornings beginning at 5. So I was thinking it's Friday night date night. Yeah, yeah, I know. Three Lines Pub. Yes, the date night special. Two meals and two glasses of wine for 30 bucks. Or I can get a whole bottle for 35 and you can get a variety of beer on tap. You know, we can swing by during the week. Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays are takeover trivia nights. With great prizes. Blackout Bingo's the last Tuesday of the month. Discounts for first responders, military, and seniors every day. Friends, food, and fun at Three Lions Pub on 13th Avenue in West Fargo. 
Hey, it's Bonnie Mastotti. The Fargo Marathon's coming up May 15th through the 20th. Have you registered yet? There's all sorts of events for everyone. Flag Family Media is going to be getting together to do the 5K, and we would love it if you would join us. It's three miles, and we can do it together. Head on over to FargoMarathon.com to get yourself registered. The 5K is Friday, May 19th. Let's get in some exercise, have some fun together. Again, go to FargoMarathon.com and get yourself registered for that 5K. Brian Feuder with the NDSCS Apprenticeship Program. NDSCS's apprenticeship program is really based on the typical apprenticeship models that have been in, a, in, in existence for many years. But currently there are over a thousand apprenticeable occupations that are recognized by the United States Department of Labor. Hi, I'm Dixie Bope. I'm the Director of Nursing at Four Seasons Healthcare Center. I encourage other companies to use the NDSCS apprenticeship program. They have a personal relationship with you. They help you out with advertising. They help bring in new candidates, interviews. Um, getting the word out. Hi, my name is Pamela Morrow, Project Specialist for NDSCS Apprenticeship. If you're interested in a program, please reach out today by calling 701-231-6927 or go online to ndscs.edu backslash workforce hyphen affairs and click on the Apprenticeship North Dakota tab. See if the NDSCS Apprenticeship Program is for you. I can't wait for what's next. Even with higher stroke risk due to atrial fibrillation and a regular heartbeat not caused by a heart valve problem, Eliquis, the Pixaban tablets, reduces stroke risk. It's the number one cardiologist prescribed blood thinner. Don't stop taking prescription Eliquis without talking to your doctor, as this may increase your risk of stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve, abnormal bleeding, or have antiphospholipid syndrome. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. A spinal injection while on Eliquis increases risk of blood clots, which may cause paralysis, the inability to move. Get medical help right away for unexpected bleeding or unusual bruising, or if you have tingling, numbness, or muscle weakness. It may increase your bleeding risk if you take medicines such as aspirin products, NSAIDs, SSRIs, SNRIs, and blood thinners. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. Learn more at Eliquis.com or call 1-855-ELIQUIS. Here's a message just for the attorneys out there. So you passed the bar, joined a firm, or even built your own. Now are you finding out that you're doing more administration than actual law practice? Lexicon can help. Lexicon is a legal technology provider with over a decade of experience streamlining administrative tasks like timekeeping, billing, and more. So you can focus on maximizing billable hours and increasing client satisfaction. Call 855-4-LEXICON or visit lexiconservices.com slash go to learn more. Back to Weather and Ag in Focus. Thanks for rejoining us. It's 1.37 this afternoon. If you'd like to join in on our conversation, feel free to reach out and be a part of it by calling the Red Wing Shoes Studio Hotline. That's 701-293-9000. We'll get you connected here to the studio with Weather and Ag in Focus. If you'd like to ask us or our guest a question, and our guest is from Red Pine Distillery up in Grand Forks, North Dakota. That's Tyler Syme. And where we left off in our last segment from our conversation we were talking about how the whole process works from step to step with distilling and how it all works and a couple of key parts that came out that i wasn't too familiar with was this whole where it's located in the batch whether it's the top middle or bottom and there seems to be a different form of quality or different content to the alcohol depending on where it sits is that just due to density or how does that work tyler um, so the, the big component of it when you're we're doing the distillation is it's not just ethanol that we're getting in that fermentation, right? So the yeast, depending on their environment, if, they're, if it's a high temperature fermentation, if there's some things in the fermentation itself that um, are going to impact the yeast in a negative way, it'll stress them out and they produce a lot of other chemicals instead of just ethanol and carbon dioxide. So that stuff... As we're distilling, as you're boiling stuff, the those chemicals have a different boiling point. So the big ones that we're talking about are methanol, acetone, stuff like that. Um, that stuff will boil off early on in the distillation. So when we're doing those cuts, when I refer to a heads cut, it's it's those higher um, 
or excuse me, lower boiling point, technically, I guess we're, we're going to describe it that way, um, lower boiling point chemicals that are going to vaporize up first. So there, there's going to be ethanol in there. So we're still collecting it because we can recycle that stuff back in um, to a next batch. But we're trying to eliminate those things. So um, the way I like to describe it for, for people, um, if you think back to the, like the moonshiner story days when people would go blind, right? So that's methanol that can cause that. Um, and in the moonshiny days when they were just trying to get as much product as they could to make as much money as they could, they weren't cutting that stuff out. They weren't separating things. They were just collecting as much as they could get, putting it in a bottle or a jar, and down the road it went. So we're trying to, right, to so get that stuff out. I see. So it's kind of like a quality and the flavor of it. That's that, that's an interesting thing. I, I think there was a... Oh, what was it? Tito's vodka. I thought that they did something similar. They only like take the, the middle of the vodka batch. But I know that we were just showing some images for those watching on Facebook or YouTube Live Acres TV uh, of some of the products you were doing. And I know that's going to lead into another question. And one of them I saw was a, a sugar beet vodka. And that kind of piqued my interest there. I might have to go try that out. <laughs> but before we talk about these other things that you're brewing, I want if you, I was wondering if you could... Uh, go a little bit more in depth uh, quickly on what the whole aging does to the whiskey and how that goes about. Cause you have a light burn, a medium burn, a heavy burn that you can do in these barrels that the, the booze just sit in and how does that affect the flavor and, and why would you choose one over the other? Yeah. Um, so the, like you're talking about the, we, what we get from the barrel making industry is you have a number of different, what we call chars that you can get from those companies. Um, they range from a number two char, which is the lighter end. Um, it's typically just they're, they're burning the inside of that barrel for a certain amount of time. Um, the far end of that, of that is usually a four. I think some of them will do a five and it really just relates to how heavily charred the inside of that barrel is. The char is going to give us sort of a, a filter media almost. Um, so it essentially is just burning that barrel into a very thin carbon filter. So as the aging process goes on um, year to year, the seasonal changes um, with temperature and then with just atmospheric pressure, the alcohol gets absorbed, pushed into the barrel, and then that's you know warmer, higher pressure, it expands in the colder weather, um, lower pressure, it's going to come back out. So it's just fluctuating through that barrel wall. The char level is going to essentially act as a filter and then give a little bit of, of flavor um, depending on the toast as well. That's another thing that the, that you get in the barrel making process is prior to charring, they'll toast it. Um, and depending mm -hmm. on that level, um, those two kind of work together. The charring itself does a lot more of like a, of the filtering, the toasting, caramelizes the sugars that are in the wood, and it's, you'll get some extraction of flavors out of that too. And, and Tyler, looking on your website, uh, I don't think I've ever seen, you use sugar beets in almost everything it looks like here. Uh, sugar beet rum, <laughs> sugar uh, pickle infused vodka. That sounds interesting. Rhubarb liquor. So the, su the sugar beet rum and sugar beet uh, vodka really grabbed my attention. Uh, are you the only distiller that uses sugar beets? I don't think I've ever seen it before. We are the, yeah, so there's um, there's two other groups that do that. Um, there's one in Wisconsin that will use beet sugar, and then there's one in Montana that I believe blends a molasses from beets and cane molasses. They do a 50-50 blender. Of, maybe it's a 52-48, somewhere in there. Um, um, we use, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, we use, um, kind of variety of, of, of inputs from the sugar beet, depending on what we're making. So if it's rum, I try and get a hold of the molasses and or whole beets, um, versus if we're doing our vodkas, the rhubarb or the flavored vodkas, um, we use a concentrated syrup that we'll get from one of the factories. And what's your, what, what's your biggest seller? Uh, the the pickle flavored vodka that you guys really? spotted. That's, that's I was going to say you would be surprised. <laughs> people go nuts over anything pickle. Well, the, that would go good like with a uh, a Bloody Mary, I would Bloody imagine. Mary. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So that's the, yep. the primary target for that product is a Bloody Mary and a Caesar. Um, so we have that product. We recently just added as of October, we sort of split that product into two. So there's a pickle like that one that you guys showed um, that's relatively stayed the same from this change. And then we added the spicier version because that was the one that we got asked quite a bit. How spicy is it? It's not spicy enough. So we dialed up the flavor a nice. little bit. Each of them are flavored with uh, a couple things. Pickle being the predominant one, which is why it shows up on the label. <laughs> but they also have pickle. Uh, we put jalapeno in there, black pepper, garlic, oh. green onion, and tomato. Oh. Mm. I saw the rhubarb, and that's like the dessert version after all of that other stuff. So sweet. Yeah, That's yes. awesome. Yep. <laughs> okay. So we've only got a couple of moments left, Tyler, but I really want to ask, you do a project with North Dakota Corn Growers Association for those members to bring their corn in, in order for you to, to distill whiskey based off their farm. I've tried some. Greg Amundsen from Gilby let me have some during a meeting. I'm not telling you where the meeting was, but I'm curious how do folks get involved in being able to do that? Because Justin is about to go plant corn in his basement to get this project started. I I, I live in North Dakota and I grow corn. So I want to make some whiskey out of it. Yeah. So the, the program is set up um, for any member of the North Dakota corn growers association. You can place an order and you will provide um, approximately 30 to 35 pounds of your own corn. Um, and we will turn that into a, a aged whiskey. Um, we label it as bourbon because it is it does fit the bourbon description. So um, being 51% or more corn, aged in a new charred white oak barrel, those things. Um, they get to have a lot of, of input on that. So it's a fun little... Um, venture that we've started um they came to to us last year it would have been i think june maybe of 2022 that they had this idea that they wanted to try and offer this to their to their members they had, they've seen it done elsewhere with pretty good success and it was something they wanted to have done a little more locally um so they'll provide us the corn um they get to have some input on the other grains that are used because bourbon's not ever really 100% corn. So you've got some different options as far as whether we use wheat, we use barley, we can use rye. Um, So they make those selections. They get to um, put together some kind of of write-up or um, images or, you know, farm logos, stuff like that. We'll develop uh, a a label to put on the back of that bottle. So it's it's their distinct um, design. It's the words that they wanted it to say. Um, so that it, it's, it's been fun. It's been used for, I think, wedding gifts and birthday presents and just a lot of fun, different stuff. And Tyler, if people want to, um, if they're looking into getting your product, do you sell it locally in the stores? Yes. So we sell all of our products currently through Happy Harry's in both Grand Forks and Fargo. So they they can locate that stuff there. Um, otherwise we do have our products for sale online through the website, um, within North Dakota and it can be shipped to you. Okay. And I was looking at the prices and I'll tell you what, I mean, prices are, are really reasonable. So we're going to have to check this out guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One, I gotta yeah try we the really target to try and make things, try and make things affordable, I'm not trying to, to gouge. And as well as the sugar beet vodka. And I feel like a lot of people are going to want to get the sugar beet vodka. Cause I mean, it's where we live. Everything is, is sugar now, beets. Now, right? is can you taste? Is is it a sweeter flavor vodka than normal? And same with the it's rum. It's got a yeah. So it's got a touch of of sweetness to it from that sugar. Um, it's got also got a bit of an earthiness tone to it. So it makes a really good mixing vodka and anything that's going to be sweet. You know, the juices, um, soda stuff like that. It's got a little bit of flavor to it. And before before I get off of here, I got to make sure that I I do I got to do this. When you say rum. Um, <laughs> The bottles don't say rum anywhere. I have to be very careful on, uh-huh. on how we how we talk about that stuff. Um, That's right. In the United States, rum is is made from sugar cane. That is mm-hmm. a, a legal definition at the federal level. Uh-huh. So um, neither of those bottles say rum on them. I use that as a description to try and communicate what they're going to taste like. So we have a that spiced spiced rum, right. white rum. Gotcha. Um, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're very similar. So the spice has got 
a, got a good flavor to it. That one's flavored with um, nine different spices: vanilla, cinnamon, nutmeg are the are the big ones. Um, and then it's also um, oak aged for about a month, just to get some color and some flavor that way as well. That's Sweet. awesome. And I got I got about a about a minute or so here for you, Tyler. Before we get out of here, again, uh, where can people visit your website what's the website to visit red pine distillery and second with the distillery do you do tours are there samplings are there ever any events going on anything you'd like to plug about that yeah so the website is it's just www.redpinedistillery.com all lowercase um, we do offer tours um, it's been pulled down off the websites since covid um, we just haven't reactivated that and then my schedule has gotten quite a bit busier since. So um, they can reach us through the website um, to make inquiries about setting up a tour. And I'm happy to, to work out that in the schedule. Road um, trip. We do some events here and there. Yeah, absolutely. You guys are welcome to any time. Just let trip. me know. <laughs> I'll drive. Perfect. <laughs> there, not back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't worry, we got, we got a lot of Ubers up in Grand Forks. <laughs> got it. Oh. Uh, Justin? You, Dean? Go ahead. I, I thought you had another question oh, for, okay. for Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I just wanted to thank Tyler very much for jumping on here with us, taking some time, uh, informing us on how the whole process works and a little bit more about the business you got. So thank you very much, Tyler, for jumping on with here and explaining all that. We're going to get updated with the American Ag Network real quick. And when we come back, we got a couple more ag topics and uh, kind of banter back and forth as well. Now is the perfect time to upgrade your kitchen with new appliances from Regals. Get up to $2,000 back on select GE Profile appliances now through June 1st. Featuring the latest smart home technology, providing a simpler and smarter cooking and cleaning experience. Smart technology meets unbeatable prices. Plus, free delivery and free recycling of your old appliances. Find out why for over 75 years, Regals has delivered value. Regals, 609 Main Avenue, Moorhead. You know you want to get out and play as soon as the course opens, right? But you need to be ready. Clubs are shined, balls are counted, gloves lined up. You just need your season pass. Well, the Meadows and Village Green Golf Courses have those individual and family memberships ready for you right now. Whether you prefer the Scottish Link style of the Meadows or the spacious fairways of Village Green, with four sets of tee boxes, you choose the challenge for your game. Get your season pass right now and be ready to play on day one. Call or go online to moreheadgolf.com. It may be the biggest cover-up ever. New congressional documents prove China funneled more than a million dollars to Hunter Biden and almost a dozen Biden family members. But the big media won't cover this story. All this week, Rob Schmidt is exposing the truth in his series Beijing to the Bidens, the cash rat line. Rob reveals the real story of China's big payoff to one of America's most powerful families. Every night, Rob Schmidt is on Newsmax asking the tough questions. Find out why millions made the switch to Newsmax with Rob Schmidt, Greta Van Susteren, Eric Bowling, Mike Huckabee, and more. Tens of millions have made the switch. I did, and you should too. So make the switch to Newsmax today. It's on all major cable systems. Or you can download the free Newsmax app on your smartphone. Check out Rob Schmidt tonight and find out about Beijing's cash rat line to the Bidens. Only on Newsmax. Real news for real people. Grain markets pushing lower in midday trade. This is the American Ag Network. I'm Jesse Allen with this market update. We're joined now by Arlen Suderman, Chief Commodities Economist at StoneX. Arlen, seeing more pressure again in the wheat markets, our leader to the downside. Corn under pressure as well. I know we got more cancellations of export sales to China announced this morning. Soy complex holding up okay, but it just feels like the path of least resistance in the grains and oil seeds is to the downside today. Yeah, it really is. New crop is leading the way. November soybeans aren't yet quite at contract lows, but December corn and July wheat at all three of the wheat exchanges make a new contract lows. Uh, nobody wanting to step in front of this market. Export sales weak again this morning for the week ending April 20th. And there's just nothing to really to turn the tide of those funds who just keep selling and keep hammering these markets. The path of least resistance is lower with nothing to stand in their way. 
Well, and thinking about export sales, the weekly numbers kind of dismal once again for the grains and oil seeds as well. It just feels like maybe a little more of this demand destruction worry possibly coming into these markets overall. Yeah, it really is, particularly when you look at uh, another cancellation on the part of China this morning. It has now canceled better than 24 million bushels here over the last two weeks of previous purchases it made. And it's looking at that big Brazilian crop and considering it basically made, it's not made yet. It does still have some risk, but so far none of those risks are on the horizon. The rainy season is going longer than normal this year, which is helping the crop, and there are no signs yet of a freeze in the forecast looking out the next two weeks. So the China looks like it's gaining confidence in a big Brazilian crop going to cancel more expensive U.S. corn and wait for that Brazilian crop to come on board. That's Arlen Suderman of StoneX on the American Ag Network. And welcome back to Weather and Ag in Focus. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And, uh, boy, that's interesting um, that they can't, since they don't use sugar cane, you can't call it, quote, unquote, rum. I didn't know that. Interesting. We, we'd heard that mentioned before from uh, uh, one of our guests, right. and I thought that was always was a very North cool thing to know. Was distillery said that? Yeah. It, far North or Distillery far North? Uh, mm-hmm. told us that, yep, from Northern Minnesota. Yeah. So, Speaking of fun facts, things we should know, uh, also one of our partners in the Here We Grow Project, Steffes Auctions, they are going to be helping us out with this project so we can take our profits to the Great Plains Food Bank at the end of our growing season on our 20 acres of soybeans. So a huge shout out and thank you to Steffes. If you are interested in upcoming sales from them, please check them out on the internet. They would be happy to have your bid. And hopefully we get out uh, actually to the farm next week and uh, shoot a little video out there hoping it's dry enough and it looks like it. It should start to dry out next week. Uh, We do have some rain on radar right now. In fact, some heavy showers just southwest of Grand Forks and those showers stretch down towards Valley City. Uh, we're starting to see some building cumulus clouds here in the valley, and we'll shortly see some uh, uh, some showers developing here over the next couple of hours. So your commute home is going to be a little bit damp, uh, but at least we're talking rain and we're not talking uh, snow. And uh, as this little clipper system moves by, we'll pick up about a quarter inch. Some spots could pick up a little bit more. Dry tomorrow for the most part, breezy and cooler, and then just chilly, raw, and windy over the weekend with Scattered showers on Saturday, but the sun should come back out on Sunday. But the real warm-up starts next week. By the middle of next week, we should be well into the 60s. So that's always good news. So I guess you could say spring officially starts next Wednesday when we should start. Hey, a question for you. We should see Ian. consistent temperatures a little warmer. Yeah, what's up? Next weekend, there's a big thing going on down there in Fargo. Yes. I think it's the Fish Fest at it's Shields. It's the Shields the Fish Fest. Sixth. Now, yeah, what's the weather looking well, like for next weekend? Our Ameri- I'm going to be down there it looks, getting it, myself a bunch of good deals. You, you'll find them there, that's for sure. Uh, it looks dry. That's the good news. Okay. Our, our American model has another dump of some chilly air coming in, uh, but most of the other models keeping it a little bit warmer. So right now we're going to go 50s and 60s for next weekend. We'll see how it pans out, but it does look, for the most part, it looks dry right now. So that's good news. It'll get kind of people in that spring mode where, all right, I'm going to go get some fishing gear. Let's head over to mm-hmm. Shields and see what they got. So yeah, t- next weekend is the big weekend if you want to stock up on some gear and uh yeah, I mean, and also we- weather's going to, hey, it's win. not going to snow, so uh, that's good. <laughs> I believe you cannot win up to, oh, I think it's $2,500 and stuff and gift cards that you can register to win while you're there, too, which is kind of cool. Can't beat that. Uh, so you might I have just a question, get a bunch though. of stuff for free. You might, but now because we know that Minnesota Fishing Opener is going to come around here eventually in May, um, how are you going to get the boat in the water with all the ice still out there? You're just going to put some pontoons on your ice house and float <laughs> it at the rate we're heading this year? Think it'll warm up by then? I'm just curious. You know, by the fishing opener, I think we'll see most of the lakes, uh, with maybe the exception of a few. There's still some pretty thick ice, but uh, I think what it's, it's uh, Mother's Day is uh, the fishing opener, right? Usually. Yeah, I mm-hmm. think we'll start to see some open waters. That most lakes should be opened up by then. Here's how you get okay. around that worry. You just buy an ice-clad hull. 
No worries. <laughs> you're good do to it. go. That'll it doesn't it matter you. where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, they man. sell it as an attachment with pontoons. That'd be perfect. <laughs> that would be Ice perfect. Breakers. Yep. Also, it's like a little train thing. Our our caller earlier that won the rain gauge, Jason. If you can shoot me an email, we didn't get your information when we got disconnected. Uh, shoot me an email, weather at flagfamily.com. That's weather at flagfamily.com. We'll get you all set up. But want to thank everybody for joining us this afternoon on weather and ag and focus. Uh, Get out and enjoy this uh, warmer weather before the rain comes in for this evening. Uh, Jay Thomas Show is coming up next. AM 970 and FM 93.1, WDAY, Fargo, Moorhead, West Fargo.